Can someone put their hands together for Jesus? Praise God, praise God, praise God. You know, um, Pastor said that today we'll be giving thanks. I don't know how many of us remember. There will be a service filled with thanksgiving to God for his faithfulness and for his goodness. And the truth is, we can never thank him enough. We can never, ever thank him enough. Hallelujah. Praise God. Um, I'd like us to open to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3. Just want to bring you a short exhortation and we'll give thanks once more this morning. Sincerely want to appreciate God's servants, Pastor Shola Oshumakinde, and our mother, Pastor Abigail Oshumakinde, for this opportunity to share God's word with you. I mean, Messi Conference, sorry, Higher Ground, I'll tell you why. Higher Ground Conference was something else, isn't it? All right, that's because we're already planning Messi Conference for 2022, all right? So it's already in my head, and it's a good thing, praise God. You know, this year would end so gloriously for you. I'm telling you, this is September, October, November, December, will be decked with God's glory and goodness for you. In the precious name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Second Timothy chapter 3. I want us to read the first verse and the second verse together. One, two, let's go. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful unholy. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you this morning for your word. Thank you, Lord, because you would minister to us personally in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise and glory in Jesus' great name. We have given thanks. Amen. You may comfortably be seated. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. This morning, I want to speak to us very, very briefly on what I have tied to developing a lifestyle of gratitude. Developing a lifestyle of gratitude. You know, we rise in this kingdom by virtue of secrets. When people know the secret to get something done and they do it, apply that particular secret, they would experience results. So our kingdom is such that we rise by virtue of knowing and practicing secrets. For example, we are in church this morning, for those of us here physically. Um, definitely, somebody came in very early this morning to open the doors. Now, when the person got to the doors, I mean, they were locked. Were padlocked for some of them, some just locked. Now the person had to identify the right key and use the right key to open the padlock. If the person came with the wrong key, I mean we'll be out, maybe outside, or we might have to break the padlock or break down the door. When you have the right key, life becomes easy for you. Well, this morning, I want to reintroduce us because Pastor has spoken about it over and over again. As a matter of fact, one of the foundational scriptures um, for this church, especially for those of us who have gone through membership classes, the membership classes, or you've gone through our discipleship class, you will discover that there is a particular scripture that we quote over and over again because those were... Amongst lots of scriptures God gave our pastor at the beginning of this glorious ministry, this was one of such scriptures that he gave him. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 19. Jeremiah 30, verse 19. That portion of the Bible says, Out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, and the voice of them that make merry. What's the next thing that follows? And I will multiply them, and they shall not be few. I will also glorify them, and they shall not be small. This is one of the secrets to not being small in life. This is one of the very powerful secrets in the kingdom of God 
to experience increase and multiplication in your life. The reason why we know that this ministry will continue to go from glory to glory is because we are very thankful and God knows it. We are very grateful. Praise is never far away from our lips. Um, I've had the privilege of being around God's servants for many years. I think almost 22, 23 years. And one of the things you would know about him is that he's always singing, especially when he's alone, he's not talking to anybody, he's singing. You hear a lot of, Father, I thank you. Father, I give you praise. Lord, thank you. And he's singing, he's singing, he's singing. Why? Because when gratitude becomes an attitude that you adopt in your life, the sky becomes your starting point. Now, Jeremiah 30, 19 helps us to see that the secret to multiplication and increase is thanksgiving. Well, if you remember Jesus, John chapter 6, from verses 1 to 13, the Bible tells the story about Jesus just finishing a crusade and lots of people got healed, miracles everywhere, just like the Higher Ground Conference. And, you know, the, the, the multitude were there. And Jesus looked at his disciples and said, well, um, where can we get food for these people to eat? And one of his disciples looked at him and said, food? There's 5,000 men besides women and children. And if we know the statistics rightly, we, there are always more women, all right, at meetings than men. Men, we need to repent. So, <laughs> now, if so, when we're talking about 5,000 men besides women and children, that means that we might be talking about roughly 20,000 people thereabout, or more. Now, the Bible tells us that Jesus said, can we get them something to eat? The disciples said, where do we get the food from? And the Bible tells us categorically in verse 6, he says, this he asked them, for he himself knew what he would do. He knew the secret. He himself knew what he would do. And the Bible says, he asked them, is there any food around? And they said, well, there is this very little thing. I mean, just a few fishes, two loaves and two fishes. I mean, what do we do with all of this? But Jesus knew what to do. Jesus said, bring it. And the Bible tells us that Jesus lifted it up and said, Father, I thank you. He gave thanks. After giving thanks, the Bible says he divided what he had with him and he gave it to his disciples. He says, go into the crowd. And as they went into the crowd, what was too small became too much. That at the end of the day, they gathered 12 baskets full. Everybody had eaten to stupor. There were still 12 baskets full. Jesus knew that the secret to increase is thanksgiving. Well, if you think that was a fluke, John chapter 11, the Bible tells us about Jesus going to the tomb of Lazarus. They had come to meet him to tell him that Lazarus, your friend, is, is sick. I mean, and he might all soon die. And Jesus decided to wait a while. I said, don't worry, it's for the glory of God. And the Bible says when Jesus got there, you know, Mary and Martha, Lazarus' sisters, came out of met him and said, well, sir, you came late. Jesus said, don't worry, thy brother shall live again. He says, for I am the resurrection and the life. And Jesus said, take me to the tomb. The Bible explicitly mentions that Lazarus had been dead for four days. That means he was very dead. Very, very dead. And the Bible explains to us that Lazarus was bound hand and foot. Now, if you understand the way they buried people in the times of old, I mean, they would tie them up, sort of like mummifying them. So that, I mean, no movement. They are dead anyway. So no movement to manage decay and do all of that. And the Bible says, Jesus said, roll away the stone. And the first thing Jesus did was, the Bible says, after weeping, he looked up and said, Father, I thank you. For thou hast heard me. The next thing he did, he says, Lazarus, come forth. And the Bible says, he that was bound hand and foot came forth. Meaning there is no situation that can hold a man bound if this man operates the principle of thanksgiving. 
Thanksgiving is a powerful weapon in the realm of the spirit. You must understand that Thanksgiving is a catalyst. Do you know what a catalyst is? I mean, when I was going through my chemistry classes in those days, they would tell you that a catalyst is anything that fastens a chemical reaction without undergoing any change in itself. Meaning, after you have prayed, after you have declared, saints, have you given thanks? It is thanksgiving that will fast track that miracle to happen faster than you think. When thanksgiving is in operation, time is collapsed on your behalf. You see, thanksgiving is a catalyst. It is a powerful weapon in the hands of the saints. And that is why one of the things the devil would always do is to get people gloomy. Get people to murmur. Sow seeds that will make you despondent. Because he understands that if he can take away thanksgiving and praise from your mouth, that he's gotten you really. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You see, prayer is powerful. But you know what the Bible tells us in the book of John, James chapter 4, verse 3? It says that it is possible to pray amiss. Why? Because there are different kinds of prayers, as we've been taught. And there are different principles that govern the different kinds of prayers. For example, there is prayer of intercession. There is prayer of agreement. You see, there is prayer of um, supplication. There are different kinds of prayers. If you are engaging a particular kind of prayer, you should know from God's word what the principles that govern that particular kind of prayer is. So it is possible for somebody to be praying wrongly. But you know, the Bible has always told us that thanksgiving would always work. You can never thank God amiss. You can never praise God amiss. Now in the book of Acts chapter 16, the Bible tells us, verse 25 and 26, talking about Paul and Silas, and we turned it into a popular song. Paul and Silas, they prayed. After praying, they did what? They sang. And then what happened? According to the song, the Holy Ghost came down. I will tell you what happened. Now you see, the Bible tells us in Acts 16, 25 to 26, that Paul and Silas, they were in prison. And then they began to pray. The Bible says they began to sing and to praise. Verse 26 says, and there was such of an earthquake. See, it says, suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately, all the doors opened, and everyone's bands were loose. It was only Paul and Silas that were praising, praying and praising. But the Bible says the result of what they did affected all of the prisoners. All the prisoners. Meaning, when you adopt praise and thanksgiving as a lifestyle, it affects everyone who is around you. Hallelujah. While thanksgiving is give, acknowledging God for what he has done, praise is acknowledging God for who he is. Hallelujah. So you see, these people understood something. Psalms chapter 22, verse 3. Psalms 22, verse 3. Paul and Silas understood this. He says, but thou art holy, O thou, that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Meaning that whenever praise and thanksgiving are in operation, God himself visits the place. You know, there are different dimensions of the presence of God. You see, as we're seated here, God is everywhere. If you walk out of here, God is everywhere, right? God is omnipotent. I'll be an omniscient. He's everywhere, everywhere. But you see, there is something called the manifest presence of God. When God is in a place to do something. You see, Paul and Silas understood that this is how you activate the manifest presence of God. The Bible says God inhabits. He lives in the praises of his people. You see, God would not eat your food. Yes, we, we give to God. But you see, we give to advance God's work. You see, God does not spend dollars in heaven. He doesn't spend pounds in heaven. He doesn't spend the naira in heaven. What God has requested for his praise and thanksgiving. You see, whenever God sees praise and thanksgiving activated in a life, God is always at work in that life. You see, you might be looking at your life and say, well, I'm not married. <laughs> you see, the way to attract and bring the husband, you've prayed enough, start thinking, start praising. 
You see, you might be looking and saying, I've been trying to change this job. I've used my faith. I have applied everything. Gear two, gear five of faith. Everything has happened. Says nothing is happening. Well, you've prayed enough. You've confessed enough. Start praising and thanking. You see, you might be looking and saying, I mean, you have only one car. The car is always breaking down. And you're complaining and thinking and thinking. I say, what kind of car is this? Stop murmuring. Start thanking God and praising God. Start praising God. Start praising God. Start praising God. Hallelujah. You see, David was a man that was remarkable in the Bible. In 1996, I remember watching CNN and they were talking about Israel celebrating about 3,000 years that David called Jerusalem the city of David. You see, after 3,000 years, this man's name is still relevant. As a matter of fact, God gave the name of this ministry, household of what? Okay. Now, David, with how remarkable he was, I began to study and to look at and find out what was the secret of David. The Bible, I mean, even Moses, with how close Moses was to God, God never called Moses a man after his heart. With all the remarkable things that Paul did, God never called Paul a man after his heart. Paul, God looked at David and said, this is a man after my heart. What was Moses' I mean, sorry, David's life like? Again, the secret of men are in their stories. In the book of Psalm 72, verse 15, David begins to give us an idea of what his secret is. Psalm 72, verse 15. He says, And he shall live, and to him shall be given of the gold of Sheba. Prayer also shall be made for him continually, and daily shall he be praised. Talking about God. David was saying every single day, I make sure prayer is a habit. I also make sure praise is a habit. But let me show you something. Now, Psalms 7, 55 rather, Psalms 55 verse 17. Psalms 55 verse 17. The Bible says, and this is David speaking, he says, evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. Meaning David was saying, every single day in the morning I pray, in the afternoon I pray, in the evening I pray. Praise God. So if you were to put that together, you say three times, isn't it? All right, Psalms 119, verse 164. Psalms 119, verse 164. David now said, well, why I pray three times? He said, seven times a day do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgments. So you can now see, while he prayed three times, he was praising seven times deliberately. Meaning, praise was a lifestyle for David. You know, David was one of the natural kings in the Bible that never lost a battle. About 60-something of the battles he fought. Never lost one. Why? He made praise a lifestyle. Thanksgiving a lifestyle. You see, we need to make praise and thanksgiving an addiction. You see, I, I, mean, I, I don't know if you've ever seen somebody who is an addicted smoker. <laughs> The person enters into a meeting and the person, one of the questions is asking, how long is this meeting? He's not asking because he wants to do anything else. He's just asking, how long would I be without a smoke? How long? If the person is flying, say, how long? They say, six hours. They say, hey, six hours without, say, and then the people will mention, he's a non-smoking fly. Say, hi, non-smoking again. The person is being punished. Why? Because the person is addicted to smoking. Can praise and thanksgiving become an addiction for you? That every time you are alone, you thank God. Just giving God praise and thanking Him. Giving Him praise and thanking Him. Giving Him praise and thanking Him. I remember when I was in secondary school. I mean, I think JS2 or JS2 or, yeah, JS, JS2 or 3. We got to school heard the news of a particular young guy, wonderful guy. His name was Timothy. 
you know, it was in the boarding house, and if you, I mean, most boarding houses, they have this bunk, right? So there's somebody sleeping up, somebody sleeping down. And they said in the middle of the night, in the night, he was playing with his friends. And, you know, he was running. And as he was running, he mistakenly slipped and hit his head against the bunk. They rushed Timothy to the hospital, took him to the sick bay, took him to a proper hospital. In the morning, we heard that Timothy had died. I mean, when I think about stories like this, not happy about that, but I think about stories like this, think about your children, how many times they run in the house, just running from here to there, slippery floor, watery floor, everything. Have you ever just given thanks to God? Have you given, have you just looked and said, Father, I thank you? Or rather, you are complaining. Oh, it's school fees time again. Hey, I'm going to pay school fees. Eh? These children, they'll be paying school fees. And the child is asking you an innocent question. Mommy, see my socks. Say, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> and the child is, what did I do? It's not the socks. It's school fees. <laughs> but have you even thanked God that you have a child to pay school fees for? There are some people that are looking for children. I mean, if you watch our movies, especially the movies produced in this part of the world, there are lots of them with people who are looking for children. Then they go to the Habalis to get a child that will be trouble for them all their lives. But, I mean, you just, God just gave you. Have you ever, have you thanked God for that husband of yours? Have you thanked God for your wife? Are you deliberate about it? Sometimes I just sit down, I look at my wife. I say, wow, Father, I thank you. I thank you. I look at my children. I say, Father, I thank you. I mean, when Thanksgiving becomes a lifestyle, it changes how we see life. Thank him for things he has done. Thank him for things he would not do. For example, God is faithful. He will never lie. So, Father, I thank you. Thank him for things he's done. Do you know how many arrows, how many things that have happened around you, but you didn't even know, you didn't notice what God saved you from. You didn't even know. You wake up in the morning, enter a car, go to the office, come back. You're angry about the job. In your anger, in his mercy, he preserves you. <laughs> they rob the car in front of you, rob the car at the back of you. You were not even aware. And this is when you are aware you will share testimony. This is when you were not even aware. Say, Father, I thank you. Father, I give you praise. Lord, you are good. You are good. It takes the attitude of gratitude to rise in life. Oh, Father, I thank you. There is no reward for complaining. There is no reward for murmuring. Maintain an attitude of thanksgiving. If there is one secret I have learned from our pastor and from his dear wife, our mother, it is giving God thanks. Being grateful to God. After every Sunday service. So let me tell us. Some of us, you know, because we might not know. Immediately, pastor finishes ministering here. While people are sharing testimony, pastor goes to his office. The first thing he does every Sunday is to get his knees to the floor. And say, Father, I thank you for the service today. Thank you. Thank you. It is a lifestyle. People that thank God never go down. I want you to just rise up on your feet this morning and say, Father, I thank you. Oh, Lord, I bless your name. Begin to thank God for the various areas of your life, for your husband, for your wife. You see, even faith, even faith is activated by thanksgiving. The Bible talks about Abraham. He says, Abraham was strong in faith. How? Giving glory to God. <laughs> no murmuring. No complaining. No murmuring. No complaining. No murmuring. No complaining. Father, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Every day I will thank you. I will give you praise. I will give you praise. I thank God for the church I belong to. I thank you, God. I thank you, Lord. Lord, we are grateful. Father, I thank you. When I think upon your goodness, 
And your faithfulness each day I'm convinced it's not because I am worthy To receive the kind of love that you give Lord, I'm grateful for your mercy And I'm grateful for your grace Hello, thank you for watching us. We don't want this to end without giving you an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. You know, um, after listening to God's word like this and you have never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, it's an opportunity to come to him and it's a simple process because he has made all things available. I want to implore you now to give your heart to Christ. And by saying these words, because giving your heart to Christ must be done consciously. He has paid the price. Say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I believe that you died for me and that you rose again. I believe that you shed your blood for my justification. I accept your finished work right now and I confess that you are the Lord of my life. I believe in you. Thank you, Jesus. If you have said those words, you are actually born again, a new creation in Christ. Join us for more of this. God bless you.